Today on The Joy of Editing, I'm pulling out Topaz Studio 2. This is episode number 63 of my Creative Toolbox series. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you for joining me today. Today, I'm pulling out Topaz Studio 2. I've created this image using Adobe Firefly, and this is the prompt I've used for this image. A candle on a wooden table, Renaissance style, still life, moody style, warm hues, photo, Baroque. Sometimes I like to go up to Adobe Firefly and create like an AI photograph of an image that I might not be able to photograph with the sole purpose of turning it into a painterly type image using Topaz Studio 2, my creative toolbox. I've already duplicated the background layer and called this Topaz Studio 2. Now this is my text prompt right here. I'm just going to shut this layer off and we're going to send this up into Topaz Studio 2. So we'll come up here to filter, come down to Topaz Studio 2. I'll click on Topaz Studio 2 and we'll launch it. I love Topaz Studio 2 and even though we can't purchase it anymore, that doesn't mean that we can't still use it. And as long as I can use it, I will keep on using it because I love it. And who knows if enough of us let Topaz know we still want and need this product. Maybe they'll update the original Topaz Studio 2 or make a new version. Who knows? Topaz Studio 3, that would be awesome. Let me know what you think about Topaz Studio 2 in the comments section below. Do you like it? Do you want them to make a new version? I'd love to hear from you. Hey, and why not incorporate all of the Topaz Studio 2 filters into Topaz Photo AI and give us a really great editing solution? All right, then let's jump right in. I'm going to use my favorite filter inside of Topaz Studio 2, and that's the impression filter. I'm going to come up and click on Add Filter, and in the Stylistic section, you'll find it right here, Impression. So let's just click on that. And already it looks like a painting, which is really nice. Now, what I'd like to do is start out by going through the different paint strokes and see what I can come up with here. On this image, I think I liked Type 03 the best. Now, you see the little speckly white flecks in the background here. We can get rid of those. And sometimes you want those in there. But for now, what I want to do is come down here to texture and we'll just scroll down a little bit further. And all we need to do is click on original and those flex go away. And basically what those white areas are is the canvas showing through. So, you know, if you're actually making a painting, you're painting on a white canvas in the areas you haven't applied paint to would show through with white like that. So sometimes you want some of that to show through in this case. I don't, but look at this already. It looks really good. And I haven't done that much to it yet. If I scroll down, you can see there are so many things we can do to this, okay? In other words, we can adjust the number of strokes from low, like this, more abstract, medium, less abstract, to high, more detailed. So whatever you want, and I think I want medium. And now the next slider I want to work with is spill. Notice the details in this candlestick. Watch what happens to them when I start to drag this spill to the right. You see how they get less defined? That paint is starting to spill out. And I think like right about here at 0.66, I think that looks good. And I like what is happening to the rest of the painting too with that little bit of spill and next i want to come to smudge this is a slider i don't use that much and what i want to do is just soften up the image a little bit with smudge see if i drag this to the right i can make the image look really soft i don't want too much on here but just a little bit to like right there like a point 22 it just like softens up everything a little bit and i so far it's really looking nice i don't think i want to do too much more in here However, I could come to like paint opacity. This is one of my favorites. And right now it's at 0.50. If I start to drag this to the right, you can see how the paint looks a little more bold on there. But I don't want that. And if you double click on any one of the names of the sliders, you'll set these back to the default settings. But you know what? That's all I really want to do on this, I think. But now I want to work with two other filters. And so I'm going to come up here to add filter. And the first one I want to work with is precision contrast. I always like to try precision contrast and precision detail with my 
painterly type images that I start out with the impression filter. Now this contrast filter is great because it breaks contrast down into micro areas of contrast, like real small areas. Think like sharpening. It will like sharpen the image with the micro. Low areas of contrast, medium and high. And you also have lighting here that you can work with as well as color. So let's start out with micro. I'm gonna drag the micro slider to the right over to like right here, 0.40. To see a before and after, you see this eye right here, just give it a click, and there you see the before, click it again, and now the after. Now I have to click on Precision Contrast again to see my controls. And the other one I want to adjust is Medium Contrast. I'll just give it a little bit of Medium Contrast up to like right there, 0.38. And now I'm not going to touch the uh, lighting, shadows, midtones, or highlights, but I will use this equalization here. These are buttons here. This is low equalization. Just look at the image when I click through these. Here is medium. And just let your eye tell you which one looks the best. And here is high. And in my case, I think I like high. Now I think the overall image is too saturated. So I'm going to come down here to color and just with the saturation. Now I did try vibrance. Wasn't really happy with that adjustment. So what I want to do is just take back the overall saturation just a little bit to like a minus 27 right there just to ease off on that saturation a little bit now let's shut this layer off by clicking the eye here's before and here's after and i think it looks really nice now i want to add one more filter and that's the precision detail filter and you're going to find it right under precision contrast in the essential area wouldn't that be great if they had all these filters in topaz photo ai they need them in there and if you feel the same way, let me know in the comment section below. Or if you don't think they need them, let me know that as well. But let's try Precision Detail. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. This is truly an awesome filter because check this out. With detail, you can adjust overall detail, shadow detail, and highlight detail. This is a really sophisticated filter. I'm just working with overall detail. And what I want to do here is bump up my small detail to somewhere right about here, 0.57. Now I know it looks bad on the entire image, but don't worry, I'll show you how I handle that in a minute. And next I wanna go to medium detail, and I just wanna increase that medium detail just a little bit, up to like right there, a 0.25. And now what I'm going to do, every one of these filters lets you mask out or in whatever you wanna do. So you see this button right here, I'm going to click it and add a mask. Now that's a reveal all mask. It's white. If we click these three dots, we can now click invert. And now it's off because all I want to do is add it to these flowers right here, this vase, this candlestick, and maybe some of these flowers down here. So to do that, we're going to click on brush and I'm going to turn this transparency up to about like 50%. And that's 50% gray actually. And now with my brush, I'm just going to paint over this flower like that. See how I bring the detail out? I'll paint over this flower and this flower right here. I'll stay off these leaves, but I'll also paint on this vase and see that detail start to pop. Let's paint on these flowers like right here. And I'll paint on this candlestick, not on the candle itself, but just the candlestick, just like that. And how about this flower in this little dish right here? Just to pop some detail out. See how your eyes going right here? I'm going to leave it off the candle, and that's really all I want to do. But I think that looks really good. Now, if you left-click on the canvas with your mouse and hold it down, there's the before, and release that left-click, and there's the after. But I really like my results. Now, all we need to do is save this out back to Photoshop, and here's how we do it. Come up to Menu and click Accept, and that'll send us right back into Photoshop. And here we are. So let me shut this layer off there's the before and here is the after now what I like to do here is I'm gonna go ahead and grab the remove tool because you see this little spill out of paint here on the edge here I'm just gonna go ahead and paint right down here with the remove tool in Photoshop and it gets rid of it now if I don't like that it pulled that candle in a little bit but I think that looks good but I could do a command or control Z undo it and then just maybe paint down here again and yeah, that looks better. Even on this side, I may just come down and paint on that edge a little bit and clean that right up. 
just like that. You know, if you didn't like this pedal down here, we could paint over that and remove it, but I kind of like it. So there we go, everyone. And now remember this image started out in Adobe Firefly, so it's a little bit on the small side. So what I could do is come up here to File and come down to Automate and either click on Topaz Gigapixel AI or Topaz Photo AI. I'll do Topaz Photo AI. This will launch Topaz Photo AI and we can upsize this image. Now, it went ahead and enhanced the image and upsized it because I have my preferences set up to upsize smaller images. It's upsized at 1.7 times. So if I click right here and open this up, you can see that this image is 3046 by 3917 pixels. I may want it a little bit bigger, so I'll click 2X. And now it's upsized two times and I'm in the uh, split screen view so you can see the before and after. The before is on the left, the after is on the right of that line, and it looks really good. And again, I could go up to max of six times in this image if I wanted to make a nice big print out of it. But let's just say I want to increase it to this size right here. And I'll just take the autopilot settings for the enhance here. As you can see, there's the minor denoise, the minor deblur, and the fixed compression settings. And I think it looks good, and it has chosen the standard version 2 model for me, which is the one I generally will use. And then I'll just click Save to Photoshop. And I will have an upsized image when I get back to Photoshop. And now here we are back in Photoshop with the upsized image. I'm going to go ahead and fit it to screen using my TK9 combo panel. But there you go. You see this little area right here? I don't like that little dark spot, so I'm going to take my remove tool and just paint over this area right here and just get rid of that. I think that looks better. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you receive all notifications and then Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. Thanks for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.